as a dermatologist who's managed hundreds of different skin conditions. If I had a magic wand that could wish away three, what we're talking about today is definitely on my top list. It is a painful condition, frustrating, and often misdiagnosed. And we're talking about hydrotinitis superativa. Hi, my name is Dr. Jenny Liu. I'm a board certified dermatologist and welcome, welcome back to my YouTube channel. And today, instead of talking about the usual skin and hair care content, I want to take a deeper dive into a more serious topic, a condition that I manage frequently in my patient population and it can be so life altering, very debilitating and honestly deserves more attention. So if you have been struggling with painful, draining boils and lumps in your underarms, under the breast, in your groin and buttock area, you're not alone. This is a chronic and can be a progressive condition that is very painful and affects millions of individuals. So hydrotinitis superativa is what we're talking about today. So I want to talk about what is HS, what causes it, and what you can do about it, and much more. So hydrotinitis superativa, or HS for short, is a chronic and auto-inflammatory condition that mostly affects a special type of sweat glands that we have in our body fold areas. So namely underarms, under our breasts, groin folds, and buttocks, which is why we see this condition affecting really those locations. And it's characterized these, by these painful boils, lumps, or even cysts that can break open and drain and even form tunnels or what we call sinus tracts that can be very debilitating. These tracts can scar down and over time cause repeated drainage. Hydronitis superativa is definitely an area of active research, which is great because as we understand this condition better, hopefully there will be more effective treatments. Now, what we do know is that HS, even though it predominantly affects your skin, it is not just a skin issue. In fact, this chronic inflammatory cytokine that is happening in your skin can affect other parts of your body and is associated with other inflammatory conditions like psoriasis, inflammatory bowel disease, as well as metabolic syndrome. So really when it comes to treating hydrotinitis superativa, even though as dermatologists we play a crucial role, it is very much a multidisciplinary approach if you really want to get this condition under control. Now one thing I do want to say is that it often is misdiagnosed as acne or recurrent current folliculitis. And you know, there is a spectrum when you have mild HS, it could be similar to treating acne, but for many individuals that have very severe type of HS, it is beyond acne treatment. The other thing I want to emphasize is that HS is not your fault. This is not a condition, contagious condition. And it, it's not about you being dirty or not cleaning your skin properly. Um, there's a lot that has to do with genetics and the environment and hormones. And so it is not something that you did wrong or something that you didn't do that causes this. And once again, hydrotinitis superativa is not contagious. So what are the common signs and symptoms of HS? Well, we talked about earlier kind of these painful boils and lumps that come in body fold areas. And in one individual, all the body folds could be involved or maybe only one location. And some may even start with one location and over the course of years have other areas being involved. Now then you're probably wondering, well, I also get like folliculitis I think I may have in my body folds because certainly friction can worsen folliculitis. How can I distinguish between folliculitis and hydrotinitis superativa? Well, as a clinician, as a dermatologist, I'll tell you it's not black and white. There's definitely a spectrum and definitely, you know, having friction in body filled areas will predispose one to having folliculitis. And folliculitis is just a term that we call inflammation of the hair follicles and definitely happens more readily in like the buttocks and upper thighs. But really what distinguishes folliculitis from hydrotinitis superativa, I should say in HS, it's the intensity is a lot more severe. So it's not just superficial inflammatory bumps, but they often are more cystic like it's deeper, often it's fluctuant, the boils are fluctuant and it's very painful and can break open and drain. And most importantly is the hallmark of scars that we will typically see in HS 
guess, that is really not present in folliculitis, simple folliculitis. Um, and these scars um, can be like individual scars or can even kind of form together to form a sinus tract or tunneling that can chronically drain. So if you have just experienced mild inflammatory bumps that will come and go, at best may leave discoloration, but they're often treatable and not really ongoing, then chances are you probably just have folliculitis. But if you experience deeper boils that would drain leaf scars that will come and go, affecting multiple body fold areas, then chances are you probably have hydrinitis supertiva. Now clinically, there is a tool called Hurley Staging System that we use as dermatologists to really assess the severity of the condition. So Hurley Stage 1 is basically single or multiple abscesses with really no presence of scars with sinus tracts. Stage two, you're starting to see these recurrent boils with the start of scars all the way to curly stage three, which is the more severe type where you have widespread sinus tracts and scarring. And really the goal is to prevent the sinus tracts from forming because once they form, it is permanent. Certainly surgery can help remove them, but it's really these scars that are painful that causes repeated and chronic drainage that can be very debilitating. So what causes HS? Like many dermatologic conditions, we don't have a straightforward answer, but probably multifactorial with genetics playing a strong role. In fact, a lot of patients with HS will report a family history of a close relative also affected by it. Hormones do tend to play a role as well, either triggering or flurrying of the condition. Especially in my female patients, a lot of times menstrual hormonal changes and menstrual perimenstrual flare is a big cause, kind of like how hormonal changes can affect acne in adult women or at least causing flare-up of acne. We do know that there tends to be a an immune dysregulation. And when I say that, I don't mean that you, your immune system isn't working properly. In fact, if anything, it's kind of on this auto drive where it's actually overly sensitive and causing inflammation around the hair follicles. So with that, we do know that HS is an auto-inflammatory auto condition. So if you have one of those auto-inflammatory conditions like Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, psoriasis, it definitely increases your risk of having HS. And then lastly, lifestyle habits, even though they don't cause HS, they can be a big contributor into either triggering it or flaring it. And the two biggest ones that is really associated with hydronitis superativa is number one, smoking. Why smoking? Because smoking itself is auto-inflammatory. Smoking creates a lot of inflammatory cytokines. And we actually know that in patients who have hydronitis superativa, they're more li likely to smoke and smoking really negates any treatment efficacy. And so that is one talk I have with my patients really seriously when they do smoke and have hydronitis superativa, but is really seeing an expert in quitting and cutting back because not only will it drive their HS and make it more severe, any treatment I give them, it really makes the treatment less effective. Number two is being overweight and obesity. So this is where we do know that HS itself is associated with metabolic syndrome and fat, fat cells, is a, there's a lot of inflammation that's created by fat cells. But two, that frictional component um, with skin fold rubbing on each other definitely contributes to flare. And because HS already occurs in areas that are of chronic friction, if we can really minimize that, it will significantly improve the symptoms. And these lifestyle modifications, I cannot overly emphasize. HS, because it's chronic and progressive, treatment really is involved in minimizing the progression so it doesn't get to that severe early stage three, as well as minimize the frequency and intensity of the flares. And I do see this in my patients that have mild disease when they kind of take control in the sense, stop smoking and get down to a healthy BMI. What they've noticed is that a lot of times they may not need much medical management and their HS stays quiet. 
And certainly this lifestyle modification becomes even more important when you have severe disease. Okay, now let's talk about treatment. Again, the goal here is to control and help progression and not cure. How we treat really depends on the severity. So for very mild cases or the kind of early stages, if patients don't have a lot of extensive scars and they only get few boils here and there, we sometimes will just even start with simple topical regimens. So that would include things we actually give for acne because they kind of work similarly in the sense they halt inflammation and reduce bacteria burden. Again, I wanna say that, emphasize that it's there's bacteria that overgrow due to inflammation, but it's not caused by an infection and it's not because you're dirty but we do use similar things like benzoyl peroxide or even HIPAA cleanse to use in the shower along with uh, clindamycin antibiotic topically to treat the affected areas and again these are more for mild cases if patients only get breakouts here and there intermittently sometimes well, I will even ask the patient to if they have a bathtub at home incorporate a few times a week a dilute bleach bath which we actually use commonly for our patients with eczema to reduce inflammation and bacteria overgrowth but that along with a benzoyl peroxide or a HIPAA cleanse wash and topical clindamycin and lotion can be a really effective and safe long-term management for those that have mild intermittent HS. And then for more moderate cases, antibiotics, oral antibiotics are still our first line go-to. We use anything all the way from like doxycycline, minocycline, things that we get for acne because again, anti-inflammatory and reduces the bacteria burden to more complex like double or triple antibiotic therapy. It just depends on the severity. And then in a lot of my female patients, if there is any history of hormonal flares, I will also incorporate if they're interested in, you know, either a birth control pill, so a combined hormonal treatment of estrogen and progesterone as well as oral spironolactone. For patients that have failed those or have already signs of scarring sinus tracts or have early stage two to three, then we talk about more aggressive treatment. And these days, what is approved, a lot of times you do things off label, but what is approved is Humira, which has actually been used for a long time, for many years for psoriasis, but now is approved for hydronitis superativa. This is a biologic that patients, it's an injection that they will give themselves usually every couple of weeks or even weekly depending on the dosing to help control the inflammation. And there are definitely other ones that have been shown to be helpful that are emerging. They're currently now used for psoriasis, but I'm hoping down the road it would be approved for hydronitis superativa and we do use them off-label. It just depends on insurance coverage. Now, for super severe cases, I will prescribe patients infusion of infliximab. So this is very similar medication to Humira, but it is done in infusion center because it is, it is given IV that is much stronger and it does help. And so this is kind of like one of the last resorts for patients that have failed topical things, failed oral things, have failed that injectable Humira. Then we may even talk about infusion with infliximab or sometimes even infusion of a super strong IV antibiotic that can temporarily buy time and give patients relief. Now, aside from the modifications, lifestyle modifications I mentioned earlier, one other thing I want to emphasize is the type of clothing to wear. So here we recommend avoiding tight clothing, choose loose fabric that's breathable. It's all about minimizing that friction that can contribute to irritation and inflammation of the hair follicles. For individuals that already have extensive sinus tracts, what can they do about it? Well, first of all, we need to make sure that you are managed medically, meaning you're not getting more disease that can add to the sinus tracts. Once they are stable, then we talk about options, more procedural, surgical options that can get rid of the sinus tract so that way they're not draining and causing pain. And there are a lot of different options. It just all depends on the extensiveness of the sinus tracts and the scarring. It can be as simple as what's called a de-roofing surgery where we perform that or surgeons can perform that where we essentially kind of lice that scar tissue and scrape away the inside of the sinus tract. And don't worry, you're doing this while you're numbed, so local anesthesia. 
um, basically removing that scar tissue and letting that skin heal secondarily so that way it doesn't continuously drain. And if there's a lot of extensive scarring, then we will send it to our plastic surgeon or burn surgeon colleagues and may even talk about skin grafting. So taking, excising all of that scar tissue and removing it and then replacing it with a skin graft often taken from the thigh into this area. Now that surgery is very much involved so it's definitely not the first thing we jump into. In fact when it comes to hydronitis superativa one of the major take-home messages is that for treatment medical management is first line. Once a patient is stable then we can talk about ways to reduce that scar burden. And lastly, laser hair removal actually is off-label but can be shown to be helpful as a treatment because we know inflammation is around the hair follicles. Getting laser around that area to remove that hair can actually be a treatment and reduce inflammation. But that is a procedure that's often not covered by insurance, but certainly speak with your dermatologist about options to see if any of these options would be one that is appropriate for you. And lastly, just remember, if you suffer from HS, it's not your fault and you're not alone. It is so physically debilitating, but also mentally challenging. Aside from finding dermatologists and providers that can treat your condition effectively, whom you trust and feel comfortable with, it is also very important that you are looking out for your overall well-being, especially mental health. So that means finding a mental health provider or even joining HS support groups. And there's quite a few out there. I'll make sure to link them below. All right, guys, that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about hydronitis tuberativa, please leave them in the comments below. And I will see you guys next time.